Did you know you don't see things the way that they are? That's right. You see things the way you are. Well, yeah. Men see things from a man's perspective. Women see things from a women's perspective. Children see things with the children's perspective. I watched the passion. You, you, you know, what's his name? Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Or Jim Caviezel. Uh, I watched the passion. A whole bunch of us went from church to the passion. I, I will tell you, I couldn't hardly stand it. There were times that I had to close my eyes. I actually bought uh, a DVD of the Passion, but I've never had the guts to watch it again. It is. I want to talk about perspective, and yet I want to talk about the light. We're going to get into that. But the perspective being this, I come out of there, I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried. Whoever was sitting next to me talking about the perspective of, of light, the person sitting next to me was very racial. They, uh, they hated anybody that wasn't white. And as I was walking out crying so hard, as I was crying so hard, this person corners me and said, Did you see that? Makes me mad. And I said, See what? They said, Did you see a black man was carrying the cross? The conclusion of the whole movie really? was a black guy carrying a cross. Probably by his name and where he's from, he was probably a black guy. Yeah. I'm not here to debate whether he's white or black because believe it or not, I wasn't there. Correct. I don't know. It doesn't say. But I would say the chances are he was probably black. What, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say you don't see things as they are. You see things as you are. Yeah, if you're angry, Yes, come on. The pastor was standing up in front of the congregation and he said, what do we call a person that talks a whole lot and everybody wishes he'd shut up? And the little boy jumped up and said, I know the answer. We call him a preacher. Yeah. How do you see things? Amen. How do you see this? Shelley's dad bought this for me 150 years ago. Uh, what is this? What is it? Shepherd's It's a staff. Shepherd's It's a rod. Wake up, sleepy head. It's not just a staff. What's the difference in a fiddle and a violin? Where are you place it in your arm? If you're playing boil the cabbage down, it is a fiddle. Fiddle. If you're playing Mozart 26, it's a violin. That's what this is. It is a staff that you can lean on. It is something that the shepherd, if you're running away or needs to get your attention, I'm not going to do the thing. <laughs> Go ahead. Just have surgery. Uh, he'll hook it around your neck and pull it to him. It, it, it's a great comforting thing. Or it's a rod. Yeah. You know, it's a rod that they uh, shepherd might hit you hard enough to break your leg to teach you a lesson. Uh, 
So we want to talk about the light. There is this terrible erosion going on in America. I believe that we are going to lose our Second Amendment rights. I, I believe that. Amen. Mm -hmm. I believe that we are going to lose our freedom of speech. Yep. Unless you're a homosexual, a weirdo, a pervert, or whatever. Yeah. Did you see where somebody painted on Nancy Pelosi Scribe's door? Yeah. We want everything. Took a can of spray paint wrote that across their garage. They're not satisfied with the 600. They said, we want everything. I believe that there is an erosion of the very foundation on which our society has been built. I want to talk about the, I want to talk about candle. And I want you to do the first part of this. Uh, and if you don't want to be on camera, don't say nothing or say lift up your hand or whatever. What is this? Can what is this? Life. That's a candle. A life. life. It's not a life. It's a candle. Right now it's there is no life whatsoever. There's a candle. No. It's a candle. It's a candle. We established that. Glenn, I would have probably answered the same way. Uh, so I, no, it's not. It's just a candle. This sermon goes back to 1993, I guess. I was in Haiti, just out of Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and uh, on a missionary trip. And the first service, there's 1,500 to 1,800 people in, in, in the church. Three light bulbs. We got what? Five on, on, on one thing. Uh, there was three light bulbs in the whole place, and they flickered on and off in 1,500 people, maybe 1,800. I don't know. Have you ever seen three people sit on one metal chair? <laughs> they, they can do that in Haiti. There's a guy that has a Two guys wear red ties, means they're in authority, and they have big long sticks with a metal ball on them. And if they see you sleeping in church, uh -oh. or if they see you talking in church, or looking at pictures in church, or on your cell phone in church, you believe that in Haiti, don't you? He'll walk down the center aisle, he'll reach that pole over, thump it right on the top of the head. Mm -hmm. So that, that sort of minimizes that. But in the first service I was ever there, there's probably eight Americans uh, there on stage, and we were called honored guests. And, and you had five minutes to introduce yourself to the crowd. I, 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 I don't know I can say anything in five minutes, and you doubt that too. Uh, but but the, I, I stood up and I looked over the crowd. I, I love to look over the crowd. When they sing, they don't clap hands, they jump. It's so amazing. It's like they've got coil springs on the bottom of their feet, and they jump, <coughs> and they're all up in the air at the same time. I don't know how they know to do that. They're all on the ground at the same time. And they'll be jumping, and they'll squat down, and then they'll stand up, and they'll jump. They, they don't clap hands, they jump. And so it come my time to get up, and I said, I am a candle for the Lord. And I turned to go sit down, that's all I was going to say. And the interpreter, little bitty black man, and, and uh, he said, what? I said, I'm a candle for the Lord. I gave myself for the light. He said, I don't comprehend what you're saying. I said, I am a candle for the Lord. I give myself for the light. He said, I still don't give. The fourth time I held my hand up like this, and I, I went like this, and I held it over there, 
And I said, I am a candle for the Lord. I give myself for the light. And he said, I get it. I get it, he said. And he got in that microphone. He got, Americans love microphones. Everybody else, I, well, they can't understand what I'm saying. I just said it, and then he said it to the microphone. He screamed real loud, this man's a candle, and he gives himself for the light. I never knew that day. We was there 15 days, 15 days from next year, 15 days from next year. And they call it the great uh, convention. And as I would walk amongst the people, I could hear them talking. They'd be all around the campground. There's one pump, and that, it was going forever pumping water. And, and uh, I'd hear them talking as I went by, and I knew they was talking about me. I said uh, to the interpreter, what are they saying? He said, they're saying, here comes the candle. <laughs> here comes the candle. What is a candle? What is a candle? Chill. Wax. Wax with a wick. A what? Wax with a wick. Wax with a wick. Source of light. If you light it, it's a source of light. It what? Source of light. It sponsors light. It sponsors light. It's a source that light can use. This wouldn't amount to much in here if it was dark. My wand. And, and we've used the candle before uh, with Harry. And, and we've used the candle before. But... A, a source of light. Uh, what, what is a candle? It's worthless unless it has the fire. What did you say? It's worthless unless it has the fire. Well, it's worthless unless it has the fire. If a candle fulfills its duty when it's done, it's done. Is it done? Right? Yeah. Uh, we've used this one here many, many times, and, and uh, there's still quite a bit there. And again, the last time I've done this, I let everybody light the candle. And we had wax masses on the pews and on the floor, so you're not going to get fire today. Uh, but the candle is not at all about the candle. And this foundation that's going on, we are redefining the Bible. I, I, I hear these preachers that you're going to hell if, all, if you don't use King James. Uh, I, I don't agree with that. No. I don't, but I do agree that slowly and surely, over time, Reader's Digest has condensed the Bible. If something's mentioned twice, it's, or a hundred times in the Bible, it only mentions it once. We are toning down, and I'm sure you have seen that the Pope has come together in agreement with a I, I never know what to call them, Islam people, Muslim people, whatever you want to call it, that we're all in this together. That, that's oh, not true. true. That, that's absolutely not true. There's only one door. That's it. And that's Jesus Christ. Hey. And you can get mad at me for saying that. Nope. But I didn't say that. The Word says that. Yes. And, and so we are seeing a devaluation. When we was in Israel, a shekel was worth about a quarter, 23 cents, something like that. So four shekels, basically a, a dollar. But that goes up and down. Canadian money 
sometimes is worth more than U.S. money is, and sometimes it's worth less than. It, it devalues itself. We are seeing a devaluation on the power of the blood of Jesus Christ yes. in this world today. The candle illuminates the way. A, a recent experience, as a matter of fact, November the 16th, I had an experience about light. Never quite had another experience, and many people are not going to believe what I say, but I had five plates of spaghetti to deliver to people. Some was going to Larry's house. Never made it. The cat got to eat it. As I was coming out of the house, it's clear as to be something said, leave the porch light on. And I, I verbally spoke back, I don't need the porch light. I know the journey from here to my car. Three steps down, five steps over, and I'd be at my car. So I shut the door, left the light off, and went out. And I felt, I warned you. So man, you talk about navigating those first three steps. I turned my foot sideways and I went down sideways. And I made it down. I don't need the light. I took my five steps. <laughs> There's a brand new, just bought that day, 200 pound fire pit sitting right behind the car that I forgot was there. My five steps were very swift. Spaghetti went in the air, it went on my face, it went in my hair. I lost my glasses, I lost my keys. It was dark. I don't need the light. <laughs> what am I going to do now? I can't get up off the ground. I don't need the light. I'm tasting spaghetti through my beard. I don't need the light. Where's my keys? I can't get back in to turn the light on. I don't have my keys. I can't open the car door. It's locked. I don't have my glasses, I can't find my I don't need the light. Three broken ribs and a broken wrist later, this side, not this side, I needed the light. I needed the light. Amen. And the church needs the light. You know, Amen. I went to church, very unusual, it was black. Everything was flat black. The ceiling was flat black. The walls were flat black. Oh. Everything's black. And it come up on the screen. Service starts in 60 seconds. 59, 58. It got down to 3, 2, 1. Poof! All the lights went out. It was totally dark in there. And then spotlights started going. Red, blue, and green, and purple. I mean, they was going all over the place. The and then a couple seconds later, smoke started coming up. And I told the guy next to me, somebody started a fire in this <laughs> church. We should be able to see the flame in this darkness. <laughs> And he leaned over and said to me, are we in a nightclub? <laughs> when the music started, I thought we was in a nightclub. Pa-boom! 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 My eardrums was making my heart beat funny. The light has been changed in the church. The importance of church attendance. In my lifetime, sinners took their kids to Sunday school. 
Come on, somebody my age. Yeah, yeah. Sinners took their kids. If nothing else, they dropped them off and come back and pick them up. Amen. Today, Christians don't take their kids to Sunday mean. school. And of course, there's an excuse. The foundation is shaken. Let me get the right gadget here. Why are our foundations shaken? Can I tell you, if we're living in the last days, this will no longer be a stack. You're wrong. It's going to be a rod Amen. of correction. Uh -huh. I had a preacher friend of mine had a teenage daughter, and he said, I don't care what you do. He said, I could beat her to death, and she's going to raise up and talk back. Said she's got a smart back. Said she cannot and will not be corrected. If there's anything worse than a kid that will not be corrected, it is an adult that refuses to be corrected. I think one of the office works of the Holy Spirit is to expose the Word of God and bring about correction Amen. when we're doing something not pleasing to God. Amen. Psalms 11, 1 through 3 says this, In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? It's called a runaway spirit. Husbands are running away from their wives, wives from their husbands, kids are running away, uh, running away. Verse 2, for lo, the wicked be in their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. We are seeing that today. Oh, they make fun of Christians. Yes. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Something's coming, church. There's a new wind blowing in this world. I can't tell you what day is it, January the 15th? Uh, is it January the 5th? There's supposed to be a big protest in uh, uh, Washington, D.C. The 6th. The 6th. They're the sixth. calling the everybody okay. to overturn the Supreme Court, Congress, uh, everything. That if 10 million people show up, that's not authority to overturn the Supreme Court, nope. the Congress, or the Senate. I, I, I don't know. And I'm not going there. Let, let me tell you, I've had a few dreams. I've had many dreams because of pizza or wine. But I've had a few dreams I've had from the Lord. Linda and I lived in this little house, concrete block house with the boys, and uh, everything was so cramped. My office was in our bedroom. And I had a dream one night, and in a dream, I saw 12-foot-high letters glowing like a fluorescent light. They, they weren't just letters. It was dark all around it, and it was glowing. And the four letters I saw was R-A-Z-E. Right. Now, I know you are very familiar with that, but I wasn't. Right. And one of the joys about sleeping on the outside of the bed is you're the one that has to get up. And, and this R-A-Z-E was in front of me, and four families was in front of me. I, I wish somebody would listen. I honestly can tell you the last three months, I know what Noah felt like. 
And I think people are absolutely wrong when they say God's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. God doesn't have to apologize to nope. anybody. Nope. Nope. Linda says I shouldn't say the word idiot, but you're an idiot if you think God's got to apologize no, for won't. anything. No, and I woke Linda up and I said, Linda, what's R-A-Z-E? I don't know, she said. Remember, I've got a college education. Right. So my study's right there. When it gets turns on the light, looks it up in the dictionary. R A Z E is pronounced Raz. 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 What does raise mean? Raise means to utterly destroy like a bulldozer tearing down a house. That's what the dictionary said. To utterly destroy as a bulldozer tears down a house. I saw four families as clear as could be. Four o'clock in the morning, I got up and got dressed and Linda said, where are you going? I said, I'm visiting four homes today. Four o'clock in the morning. I went and knocked on the first door. I didn't knock on it, I beat on it. I beat on that door. They lived up, they were upstairs and that's downstairs. I beat on that door. I beat on that door. I beat on that door. I had a message straight from God for that family. And I said to that family, talk about a light shining. I said to that family, do you know one day that guy brought an uh, X-rated DVD to my house to watch? He said, Preacher, I think you need to watch this. And he left it. And when he left, I prayed. I picked up that X-rated DVD and took it back to his house. I said, I don't need to see this. I know what the world's about. They finally saw the light come on and they stuck their head out the window and looked down and saw me and I said, I gotta talk to you. They come downstairs and said, don't wake up the kids. I said, okay, I won't wake up the kids. But I just had a dream, R-A-Z-E, raise. I looked it up and it means to utterly destroy, to wipe out, as a bulldozer does a house. They cried. They agreed with me. I said, God's warning you through me to tell you if you don't change, you're going to pay dearly. They agreed. They cried. We prayed together. They was at church Sunday morning and Sunday night. The light had come to their house. Church, I hope you don't take what I'm saying lightly. Amen, I'm not going to tell you about the other three families, but I could tell you a horror story on an awful, but I am going to tell you about that one. They never did get in church, never did get established. Never. They was in and out, up and down. If the car was broke down, they was in church every time the doors was open because they couldn't go any place, so they rode with me to church. If the car was running, they was never at church. They was at the drive-in, they was someplace. Let me tell you, I had the privilege since pastoring here in Smithsboro of going to LaGrange. You know what LaGrange is? It's, it's a big, huge prison. Big prison. It goes way up in the sky. Covers acres of land. Fifteen years later, 
this guy that served on my board as a deacon was locked up in prison for 28 years. I heard he was in prison and that he got a long time and he was in the county jail for a maybe two years, and they shipped him to LaGrange. And I felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to go see him. I think I had a Pinto station wagon back then, but I wouldn't swear to that. I loaded, I loaded up in the car, and I drove to LaGrange. It's on the other side of Louisville. It's just past Crestwood two and a half hours away. And I got to thinking about this guy that had been a deacon at our church that had slowly, over time, backslid. And I got sick. I pulled over on the side of the highway and threw up. And I got to that gate and there's a process you've got to go through before you can go in and they have to have put you on a list and all that kind of stuff. Nobody had come to see him in six years, not one person. I went in and I wandered. I stopped at the gate going in and threw up. And the guard said, are you sick? And I said, yes, I'm very sick. My heart's broken. And I went in and sat down at this metal table. All you could take, I, I, I don't remember exactly, you could have $10 and quarters, something like that. You couldn't have anything else on you. They locked everything up. So I took all the quarters that, that I could take and I went in and I sat at a table and I cried and I cried. They had to get him from the barracks that he was in. And they brought him in. And he sat down at my table. And I was crying. And he was crying. And he said, Preacher, do you remember the dream? I always wondered had he remembered the dream. He asked me, you remember the dream, the race? I said, I always wondered if you remembered it. He and his wife got to fighting all the time. They divorced. He married again. He abused a young girl. He abused another young girl. He got out of that. He went home and he was so proud of himself getting out of it, he did the same thing over again. This time, the judge threw the books out. 28 years in prison. Went from a deacon attending church to skipping church to having parties. And the parties got wilder and wilder and the marijuana and alcohol and orgies got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And God raised his home. The light came to him to warn him, and he paid no attention. He lost his trust. You know how it started? He started finding fault with everybody at church. So-and-so's got a big mouth. So-and-so said something about me. So-and-so, and, and he got to watching people. You're always going to be raised if you watch people. The light is the only thing. I, I think we need the light. Here it's called a lamp. In, in a, some other versions it's called a candle. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. 
If I had left the light on that night, I wouldn't have fallen and hurt myself. Stupidity. Again, Linda tells me not to use the word idiot, so I'm not going to call myself an idiot. You can't see where you're going without the church and the Word of God. And the darker the night is, the greater the light is. You hear me? Amen. Then Jesus spake to them, John 8, 12. Jesus is talking and he said, I'm the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Have you ever known a family that has the same problems over and over and over and over? Mom fighting with the kids or what? And, and, and next week, they're going to be right back here. Next month, They're going to come right back to the same problem. Why? Because they didn't let the light expose the problem. If you can't see the problem, if I'd seen the fire pit, I would not have fallen. I'm, I'm not that dumb. Jesus said, I'm the light. Follow me. I'm going to close with this today. All I am at best is a candle for the Lord. This candle's not been lit. It's easy to tell it's not been lit. A candle that's been lit will tell on itself. I, I love this little poem. I saw it. 30 years ago, and I wrote it in the front of my Bible, and I told Linda, Linda, will you find this poem? It's in the front of one of my old Bibles. And she looked and looked and looked, couldn't find it. She gave me the Bible, and I found it immediately. I told her, candle, and it says, lamb. But would you listen to these words? Let me come over here where I can read it real good. All God's called you to be is a light, a candle to bear the light. I think that the reason we're sitting in this church today at 70 degrees is because somebody filled up the gas tank out there. For years, we used to worry about the insurance and the gas tank. For years, I never worried about the gas tank. It's, it just is this mysterious gas tank that when it gets low, it gets full. I've wondered for years, how on earth is it doing that? And I believe God could do that. But one day, I, Lynn and I decided, we're going to pay for it this year. It was low, so I drove to the gas company. I got out of my car, and I went in, and I told the lady, my wife and I are going to fill up the gas tank. She said, you just missed five minutes ago <laughs> a guy from your church that came and paid to fill up the gas tank. Said, I can't believe you didn't see him. Said, which way? I said, I come in this way. She said, well, he went out that way. <laughs> Your light shines, you know, whatever. That Larry's guitar, we've enjoyed the discussion he was. of where did it come from? Where did it come from? And, and a whole lot of people have got credit. Keith is the latest name I heard. King Somebody King. said, you think? Keith Davis uh, gave Larry that guitar. I said, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But whatever you do in darkness, we will come out in the light. Look at this point. I thought so much of it. I, I wanted to put it where you could read it. 
They will only see the light of our hope. I, I don't know who wrote it. This light am I to shine where he shall say. And lamps are not for sunny rooms. Right? This candle doesn't hardly show up in a sunny room. Nor for the light of day. But for the dark places of the earth. That's where the light's needed. Where it's dark. Where shame and wrong and crimes give birth. Or for the milky twilight gray. Where wandering sheep have gone astray. Or where the lamp of faith grows dim. That's where we need the light. Oh, man. And souls are groping after him. And sometimes a flame we find. Clear shining through the night. The night. That's a title. Clear shining through the night. It's not going to clear shine through the light. Okay. So dark we cannot see the lamp. So may I shine as love and as flame that men might do eyes, men might glorify his name. If it's really dark, your candle cannot be seen. I've had people get mad at me because I didn't call on them to do communion. I've had people get mad at me because I didn't sing happy birthday because I forgot. I've had Jonah in the ark in my preaching. The only person I know that's infallible is the Pope while he's sitting on the throne in the Vatican. And I want to tell you this, my opinion is he's not infallible then. You're not infallible, nor am I infallible. We need the light. Amen. And you are not the light. You can't be the light. All you can be is the candle. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't yes. want people to see me. Yeah. No, Rick went with me to Somerset, Kentucky. I was preaching outside, 105 degrees, in direct sunlight. I was sweating so much. I was dripping with sweat. It was a camp meeting. And I was dripping with sweat. I had on a light tan suit, and my light tan suit looked like I had taken a bath in it. I was burning up hot. I stayed behind the podium the whole time. I didn't want anybody to think I'd wet my pants. You, you know. And Rick said something to me. I said, Rick, I'd rather preach from the van, not because it's air conditioned. I'd rather preach from it because I don't want me to be seen. When a funeral starts, they say, you go sit down up in front of everybody, we'll play the music. I say, no, I don't want to be up front. I, I don't want to be up front. When the music's over, I'll go up front and do my job. I, I, I'm not a, up front. I don't like up front. Amen. I, I, I was so timid that in the eighth grade when I had to give a three-minute speech, my nose bled. I, I, I don't like that. It's just not about me. And somehow, the erosion of the foundation has come because we think the church is about personalities in Texas, in Florida, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in wherever it is. This church has nothing to do about you or me. When I'm dead and gone, 
I hope this church thrives. Amen. Sometimes I wonder, would it thrive better without me than with me? I, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if people that won't come, if there was a different personality, uh, maybe they would come. But then I remember the R-A-Z-E. You haven't lived. I, I took out my quarters and laid them on the table. Nobody had ever come to see them. And I never ate a candy bar or drunk a pop. I, that boy, when he's done, he spent all $10. He ate so many candy bars and drunk so many pops that I wouldn't have wanted to have been there the next day. Do we miss the passion because of black man's carrying the cross? Are we mad at somebody today because we think it's about me, the candle? It's not about me. The best thing I could ever do is put my candle in a place that it's so dark that you can't see my candle. All you can see is Jesus. The light. Amen. I ask you today, I take very seriously, this is my first sermon of 21. I got six sermons this week. They're done, they're finished, they're on this stick. But I felt like this is what God wanted to say. Is your light going to shine in 21? Pretend with me, okay? This is burning. See it burn? Yes. See it burn? Watch this. Watch this. Mine's burning. Hers is not. Right? Watch this. <laughs> now look they're both burning does it cost the candle anything to light another nope. candle somebody needs you today somebody needs your light who is this somebody that needs your light probably the person that doesn't deserve it does not pick up my words. You're going to think I'm like that young boy that says, who is it screams and nobody listens. And the young boy said, the preacher. I'm praying somebody hears what I say. Amen. And that 21 is different than 20. Yes. Thank you, Lord. See, it's up to you. Let's pick up one more verse this morning. Pastor, you said, what Talk is that? loud. You said, what is that? And I thought, it's a voter candle. But that's a different kind of candle. We're all different. But the light can be used on each one. We, we're all different. Amen. And we try to be like everybody else. If God wanted you like me, he would have made you like me. My clothes wouldn't fit. <laughs> We'd be in big trouble. Right? <laughs> you get you what? Can you give me a copy of that poem? All you got to do is tell me that you want a copy of that poem. Well, I was writing it down. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. Absolutely. If we can yeah, just see, can give you a copy of it today if you need it today. Uh, it says this. I want to get more into the foundations tonight. Amen. But today I want to, and I will cover some more about the candle. But this is where we're at today. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. What day? The day of salvation. Today. Today. 
Now. What day? Now. No. The day of the second coming of the Lord. Amen. The night's almost over. It's past midnight. We had a cuckoo clock. I got a brand new cuckoo clock in a box. Thank you, Pam. How many years have I had it? I'm so afraid I'm going to drop it and break it. I, I did that to one. It cuckooed. Twenty-one times it cuckoo. And I looked at Linda and I said, Linda, it's later than it's ever been. I believe January the third, twenty twenty is later than it's ever been before. Yeah. Amen. The night's far spent. Hallelujah. The day's at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You ever tried to read in the dark? I used to not want to wake Linda up at night and I write down notes at night that have come to me. And Dee Carter gave me this little, uh, what do you call it, Larry? It's a book light. It's a, it's a book, book light. Yeah. And, and, and I just pop that up and, and it gives me great light to write or read with. You can't read in darkness. You can't read what time it is right now. I told somebody this week with a clear assurance. And I really believe it. I believe I know what Noah felt. Not just because of that rise, raise. I feel it because I preach my guts out. And I see no change. Yeah. Therefore, what I'm preaching must not be the truth. Huh? I keep asking God for an entertaining sermon. No. They got enough here to pickle us, Pastor. We don't need another. Then we'd have to call you Jesse. Okay, let me close with this story. <laughs> wow. Young preacher graduated Bible school. Head of his class. And he looked for a church to pastor, and he couldn't find a church. No church wanted him as their pastor. He was sort of ugly and on the slow side. He was my first cousin. <laughs> and nobody wanted him. But there's this little church way out in the country that no pastor would go to. <laughs> so guess what? The ugly preacher ended up at the ugly church that nobody wanted to pastor. And that first Sunday he was there, he stood up and he asked the head deacon to lead in prayer. And the head deacon stood up and said, now, Lord, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and we thank you that we finally found a pastor. And Lord, I want to tell you something. I don't like lard. And the young preacher opened one eye and looked at him and thought, what on earth is he praying? And the deacon went on and said, Lord, I don't like lard. And Lord, I don't like flour. It's too dry. And Lord, I don't particularly care for buttermilk. Lord, I don't like it at all. But he said, Lord, I love it when you 
and mix it all together and make a biscuit. And I put butter on it and I eat it. <coughs> and the deacon said, hey, Lord, you know what you're doing. You put together a whole bunch of stuff that I don't understand. I don't understand what you're doing, Lord. But Lord, I sure am going to enjoy eating the biscuit. Yeah. Amen. And I'm telling you, with great authority, 2001 is going to be a year of the rod. Amen. I want to look at every one of you in the face, even the ones sleeping. I want to look at every one of you and tell you that you either going to get the rod or the staff. Yeah. And that's not up to me and it's not up to my preaching. Yeah. It's up to you and your life. Are you ready? Get your light out there in the palm of your hand. You ready? So yeah. 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 Hurry, we want to. Yeah. McDonald's is going to be cleared out. <laughs> Restaurants are open. Right. Hmm. You ready? This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, hide it under a bushel. No! I'm going to let it shine, hide it under a bushel. No! I'm going to let it shine, hide it under a bushel. No! I'm going to let it Shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, I'm going to let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. The choice is up to you. Yeah. Of how dark or how light 21 is going to be. You blame your wife, blame your husband. Or I will, if necessary, I will come to prison and see you. But I don't want to. I'd rather meet you right there. Amen. I remember one Saturday night at church. <coughs> that man and I prayed for two or three hours on the altar. He went to the back and got him a town, me a town. How can it happen? Really easy. What do you need to change this year to make it better than last year? Thank God you got your $600 in the bank. Praise God. I can't it. It's up to you. Up to you. What is it? How far off? Thy rod and thy staff will come to me. Will you bow your heads and let's pray?